Good morning, everybody. Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here. Coming at you first thing Saturday morning with a bit of a froggy throat. So how are you all this morning? I know it's been a little while since I've done a stitch with me, so I wanted to get up and get going and do one. Mike actually had to run to work real quick this morning, so I thought I would plop myself down here while he is gone. I'm actually sitting in my stitchy spot, so I'm in the living room on my couch. I have my phone clamped on to my Lowry stand. So, yeah, you are stitching with me in my happy spot. And that's always a good thing, right? Lord knows we've needed it. So, let's see. It is Saturday, October 5th at 8.32 in the morning. 75. Oh, only going up to 82. Going down to 68 tonight. That would be lovely. <clears throat> Maybe we can actually leave the windows and doors or windows open. Yeah, and door out to the lanai. So how is everybody this morning? I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. I don't know what we're doing. We really haven't gotten out and about much the past couple weekends since Mike's parents have been here. Mike has been busy cooking on weekends and getting errands done, but we hope to get out. If not today, then tomorrow and wander around a little bit. <clears throat> we shall see hope you enjoyed my little wander through my yarn stash yesterday. I did start, I did my gauge swatch yesterday morning after I picked out the yarn. I actually changed one of the yarns. Um, still a, a cream with a bunch of speckles in the right color range. Um, it was already wound, <laughs> so I didn't have to worry about that made three skeins that I didn't have to worry about winding. I got the fourth one wound and I did a swatch yesterday and started the first part, the first clue yesterday afternoon. Just a little bit. I probably am only going to spend like an hour a day knitting <clears throat> in amongst everything else. I'd like to get it so that like the first, first thing in the morning I spend some time knitting. I think that would be a nice peaceful way to start the day. So we shall see. All right, I need to count down. Let me mark these off. I am working with this pattern in Knit Companion. All right, one, two, three. So it's the fourth one down. Skip three. One, two, three. So it's this one. I'm sure I did that right. One, one, two, three. Oh, I think I went down one too far. One, two, three. Yep, should be up one. This is why you always count two or three times before you stitch. Now I'm going to count again. One, two, three, and then it's the next one. So let's see, um, Lowry stand, I mentioned my Lowry stand. At some point I will do some kind of review on it, a look at it. Um, I've had several of you ask. There are a lot of other Lowry stand reviews out there on in the floss tube world, and those are actually what I watch to help me decide what I wanted to get. But um, yeah, I can, I'll do one at one point. I did, um, huh so mad at myself and I think this is all part of this kind of menopausal fog that I'm in I you know I mentioned before that I wanted to get the extender arm <clears throat> and that by the time I had bought my Lowry on Amazon the extender arm was sold out so this week I had ordered the one from Lowry work stands their online store and it arrived um, I guess Thursday maybe I got the wrong one. I got the stainless steel one, and I have the, what is it, the silver powder gray stand, whatever. 
the stainless steel rod is bigger. I mean, why do they do that? Maybe the stainless steel was the prototype and then they slimmed it down some. I don't know. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do at some point here, if anybody out there has the stainless steel stand and you would like the extender rod. Now, this isn't the rod to hold the bigger frames. This is the rod that you stick in the stand that ha like has the arm that extends out further. So if anybody has the stainless steel stand and would like the thicker or the, the extender arm, let me know and we can work out something. I'll probably post, if, no, if nobody here wants it, I'll probably post it, you know, in one of the stash unloading sites. Once I do that, then I will order the correct one. It was 35 pounds shipping. It cost more for shipping than it did for the item itself, which is, you know, just another wonderful thing about living in Hawaii. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm still grumpy, I'm still grousy. I will talk about my doctor's appointment here in a second. Wanted to mention a couple other things. Um, first of all, you remember I mentioned to you guys the Australian couple, the overlanders who were arrested in Iran and um, had been in prison there for a few months. They were released. Um, well, at some point in the past few days, I guess, the New York Times, there was an article in the New York Times. My friend Ann shared it with me. So they are released and they are back home in Australia. I assume they're, all of their possessions maybe are still in Iran. I don't know. The article didn't go into that kind of detail. At some point, I'm sure they will do an update <clears throat> and kind of let us know. The article did say that they were in good health and in good spirits, so that is good. Um, but I, I, Mike and I were just so relieved to hear that these kids were released. I'm sure the Australian government worked out some kind of deal with the Iranian government um, to get them back home. Oh, what's that one supposed to be? Oh, shoot. See that little missing square right there? That's supposed to be that blue. Gosh darn it. I hate it when I do that. I haven't shown you this. just realized I'm stitching away and haven't talked about it. Mushrooms, what a surprise, right? Stitching is almost done. I have a few odds and ends through this area, but for the most part, I just have to get the stitching done here. So I will get that done, I'm sure, tonight at some point, and then start on the back stitching. I doubt if I'll get all of the back stitching done. I mean, I, I pretty much have to stitch the whole day tomorrow to get all the back stitching done. Um, you know, I wanted to get have this done by the end of the weekend. That, it's going to be close, but it's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I might take it to a different place here instead of going. The framer that I got the other things framed is over on the windward side of the island over in the Kaneohe, north of Kaneohe area. Um, and I, I don't want to be driving over there during the week. Granted, it's not like it's a huge distance, but um, the traffic here is just so bad that I'd rather not be driving that distance by myself during the week, and I don't want to wait till next weekend. I want to get this into the framer. I could go to the Ben Franklin. I'm going to talk to the ladies here and see if anybody um, has used Ben Franklin for their stitching. I think, Dee, Dee, if you're watching this, am I remembering correctly that you've used you, that you have used Picture Plus for some of your stitching? Because I might just go to the one down in, um, down in Capolet. Sorry. 
looking and talking at the same time. Let me figure out where I'm supposed to go. Okay, over here, over here. So yeah, I'm, I want to get this into a place where I can be sure, this and the other one, of course, where I can be sure that they're going to get done in plenty of time for the boys to be here. I don't know, I'll have to talk to Mike and see what he thinks. Because we could always just drive over there one evening, at least we would be going against traffic, heading across the island. All the traffic is coming out of Honolulu in the evenings. So, stay tuned. Hopefully in the not too distant future, you will see both of these fully finished, framed, ready to be given. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they think of them. I'm just excited to have them here, right? So, my knitting, the West Knits um, Mystery Knit Along. I hope some of you knitters will join me. I will be showing my progress for that on my Floss Tube on Tuesday. Sorry I didn't get my stitch with me done yesterday. I was able to record the whole yarn thing before I left for my doctor's appointment yesterday. Um, and I wanted to get that going and play in my yarn. So that's why you saw that yesterday and this today. But it's all good, right? Two videos in a row. Not that, right? And then my regular floss tube on Tuesday. So doctor's appointment. It was good. So I'd had, like I said, nine vials of blood taken. She tested everything from cholesterol to sugar to what my all of my vitamins are looking like, what my thyroid's looking like, um, iron, just everything. She, she, she had the whole, the whole spectrum done. And everything is good except cholesterol. No surprise there. Um, all of my vitamins are good, my iron's good, my thyroid's fine, you know, so all that's good. And the hormones she did as well, and the hormones showed what expected, what was expected, that yes, they're low. <laughs> so we went over again. I had already had an appointment with her discussing all the options for hormone replacement. So we talked about that some more. I asked some follow-up questions. Um, she did a brief exam to make sure she understood where I was clinically, I guess I would say. Um, so basically she works with a, a um, compounding, um, what do you call it? A compounding business pharmaceutical company in Utah. This is a bioidentical, it's not the tradi traditional hormone replacement, it's a bioidentical which um, I guess traditional the traditional Primarin that um, is used mostly is actually made from pregnant mare's urine. <laughs> That's where they get the estrogen from. Yeah, I mean the estrogen's there, but I guess there's other things as well that are questionable. Um, so the bioidentical, I think, is actually manufactured from plants, I guess. I don't know whether it's better or worse. I don't have the same kind of risks that a lot of people have. Um, because I have had a hysterectomy, I don't have to worry about the progesterone. The progesterone is what the uterus produces. Um, but I don't have to worry about that since I no longer have a uterus and that the progesterone is what is known to cause the breast cancer and the uterine cancer. And of course, I don't have a uterus anyway, so that's good. Um, so I don't have those risk factors. Um, there, there's all kinds of other risk factors that they take into account that I don't, I don't, um, I don't have markers for, I don't have family history for, and also using this bioidentical one. Um, I guess it's in studies it shows to be 
less of a problem. There's still some of the heart risk, and that's why we have to you know look at the cholesterol and, and work on getting that done. Um, luckily, she didn't want to throw statins at me. Um, I've taken red yeast rice often enough, and it does help some, but I'm not a big one on taking all of these prescribed pharmaceuticals that doctors want to throw at you. Mike actually was, Mike has awful, has a fam, awful family history with cholesterol and triglycerides, and he has been on statins a couple times, and um, boy, talk about side effects. It, it was downright scary with him. He, um, he would lose his memory. His short-term memory was just gone. When he first started taking them, the first time, we not long after, like maybe a week, I don't know how long, we had gone to Kohl's to buy shoes for Ben. And we were walking through Kohl's and he said, what are, what are we here for? And I said, we're here to get shoes for Ben. And I swear we hadn't taken, you know, we were walking back to the shoe department. We hadn't taken like five more steps and he asked again. I think he asked another time too. It was it was like just so such a stark example of what was happening. And 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 the third time I was like, "What is your problem? I just told you." So he immediately said it, it must be the statins and he immediately stopped taking them. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we moved to Florida and we had our revisit, and after after the first time we got our diet and our health, that's when we started using the Beach Body products and started exercising, like, and and eating according to ev all their programs, and really, really got our butts in gear, basically. Um, let's see, what am I doing? Just trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Um, so yeah, he didn't need the statins because he was able to get his cholesterol fixed with the diet and exercise, which of course is the best way to do it. But then life happened a number of years later. We moved to Florida. We stopped, we stopped being so good basically. Went to a new doctor down there, had the all the blood work done as our, you know, kind of baseline of who we are and what we are, and Mike's numbers were through the roof again. So once again, the doctor prescribed statins, and he decided to give it a try. You know, a, a, a different brand maybe, I don't remember. Once again, we were sitting on the couch in our living room and talking, and he um, he asked me something. And again, like five minutes later, he asked me the same question. And he said he knew immediately at that point when I gave him, you know, the, the look of what in the world is wrong with you <laughs> kind of look. He knew immediately what, what was happening. Um, so again, he stopped the statins. So yeah, he's, he can't take them. I've never had to. I'm going to work on mine. My my HDL's good. My it's the other numbers that are bad that we have to get it all straightened out. So anyways, the doctor sent the prescription into this compounding agency that she uses, pharmacy that she uses in Utah. So they will get in touch with me next week and get the prescription to me and we will get this ball rolling. I don't feel, I haven't felt too bad the past couple days overall, but I'm anxious to get started. She was really pushing laser. I guess laser is an option for um, the estrogen replacement. I don't really understand how it all works, but I just, oops, I just know that the cost for this prescription is $60 for three months versus $1,200 for 
four or for each laser treatment and I would need four of them over four months and then once a year. <laughs> so that's like a no-brainer. <laughs> Sorry. We balk at the price of gas here. Let alone $1,200 for a laser treatment that I don't really need when I there's another option which may have different outcomes. Maybe not as quick to act, but to react, but yeah. Of course, if I did the laser treatment, she would get all the money rather than just $60 going to the pharmacy. But, oh well. I'm not here to make my doctor any richer than she already is, right? No, don't get me wrong. I like her. She's really good. She's really up on the latest, and I am totally happy with her. But she was pushing the laser treatment. So, yeah, not a whole lot else going on here. The only other biggest news in my world is that Mike made gluten-free pizza yesterday. A deep dish pizza crust gluten-free. <laughs> no, it was not like wheat gluten pizza, dust, pizza dough. It wasn't, you know, nice and chewy, but it was thick. And it did taste okay. So sometimes when there's a need, you gotta scratch it. And he likes experimenting with that kind of stuff, so that works. I think that might be the last I need. There's several colors now that I've done the last I need to with them. Are you hearing the knocking from the, the blinds? I have the, the door open here. I have a fan on those, so the wind is blowing the blinds and it's knocking. It is not my cooking in the kitchen or doing the dishes. Like I said, he is at work. I've, I um, have put all my threads for this project on one of these things. I just laid some scotch tape down on it and wrote the numbers on, and it goes so much faster than working with um, the bags, having to pull out all the bags and open and pull the thread out and pull out a strand and close. So I think as much as possible, I'm going to try and continue to use the, these thread thread organizers for the smaller projects. All right, guys, I think that is probably about it for today. I am going to get this uploaded, get dishes done, get a shower, and then figure out what we're doing today. But stay tuned for a finish here, hopefully by Tuesday, depending on how much time I have to stitch tomorrow. I may have this done by my floss tube on Tuesday. It's kind of hard to imagine. I'm starting to think, what do I do next? I think after this, I'm going to concentrate on shades of gold, patchwork, and hoity-toity. See if I can get a bunch of progress done on those before the end of the year, because we're appro approaching the end of the year already. I mean, how is this possible? My year of BAPS did not turn out <laughs> at all as I had hoped. I now have a lot of big projects started. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to get that fractal bookmark done. I don't know whether that's really a reality or not. Look, there it is right na there, because I'm sitting in my stitchy, stitchy spot, and it's right there. I would love to get this done before I start my bigger projects, but I also want to work on the Santa Fe decor one, too. Oh, my God, I know. My brain's exploding and so is yours. All right, guys, I am out. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you again on Tuesday. Love you guys. Bye-bye.